Walter, coming to you from Foothills, Alberta. In this series, AI Ability, I'm going to dive into some AI tools for beginners, how they have helped me, and possibly how they can help you. In this third episode, I'm going to pick up from the last episode, where we covered the first three steps of using AI to update your resume and your LinkedIn profile. So that took an entire episode, and a quick recap of that last episode, we covered the written resume sections. So the first step was we analyzed your LinkedIn profile using AI. The second step is that we wrote a compelling headline and about section. And third, we wrote descriptions for work experience and education with the help of AI. So that kind of sums up what we did before. And now in this episode, we are going to cover the last two steps of our LinkedIn challenge, which focus really on the photos and the background sort of portrait photo. So step four is we're gonna either edit a photo or we're gonna use an AI headshot generator for a professional looking headshot. For this, I will show you two options, how to edit a photo you already have. And for image generation, we're going to look at Dreamwave AI and the Multiverse AI. I found that these headshot generators generated better images for a professional looking headshot than many of the other options out there. The fifth step, we're going to use AI to custom design a profile background image. We're gonna do this by asking AI to generate ideas for the images for our LinkedIn background photo. We'll do this by giving the AI information about our field of work using our updated LinkedIn page. So it's representative of our work. Then we're gonna use these as prompts in an image generator and see what AI comes up with as a personalized design. To start, we're going to explore an editing option for a photo that we already have or that you can easily take at home. And then we're gonna do, go into taking a look at what to do to generate some AI options for a headshot. I think both of these options are decent choices until you have the time or the money to get real headshots done. And they take so much less time. So it's kind of a great option. AI generated headshots offer a convenient way to update your profile until you can schedule a professional photo shoot or save up the money for one. I found the options from Dreamwave AI and the Multiverse AI to be photorealistic enough to be worthwhile for the short term for LinkedIn. Another huge upside of giving one of these tools a try is that they give a number of options for hair and wardrobe. If there's a few that are really great, it's worth making a note of what looks really good on you or a background that you like and recreating this in an actual photo shoot. It takes some of the guesswork out of what to wear and what, how to do your hair and also where you'd like to shoot. So that's a huge time saver. It's also worth noting, I like these two tools best for LinkedIn headshots because LinkedIn is really a professional social media network. So you need to upload a professional looking profile picture to increase your chances of receiving a response from potential employers. There are some great AI image generation options out there, but I thought some of these created options that were more towards the glam or sexy side of the spectrum. If you wanna compare those, check out Photor AI and try it on AI. They have samples on their websites that you can take a look at and compare before purchasing. If your brand is a little bit glam or maybe a slightly sexier, these might be better options for you. Before we get into AI generation, let's take a profile picture you already have and make it more professional. This works best if you have a photo in a suit or professional attire, whatever that might be for you that fits your profession and already has good lighting. The lighting's important because we're not gonna be able to fix it using this tool. Use a plain or uncluttered background if possible and make sure your face is well lit, free from shadows, and you have a friendly or natural expression. 
let's head over to a new tool that's a background remover site. I'm using Remove Background at www.remove.vg. This is an AI site where you can upload your picture and it will remove the background from it. So go over here to Remove Background and select an image. I'm gonna go to, oh, it already popped up for me, that's awesome. So we can cancel that. Go to the background tab here. And on here you can choose any sort of background that you want. This is sort of a blue gradient, let's pick that. That looks a little bit strong. Maybe we get, that's a little bit better. So you can go through these and see like some of them are obviously are not gonna be usable. Um, but if there's sort of a blurred out one here maybe, yeah, something like that is a little bit like what you might see. There's not a ton of options, but you can click done and then download. As you can see, you're not gonna be changing any of the lighting or any of the clothes on this. So your initial photo is more important for something like this. And that ends up being your file. So as a profile pic, you can even you know, zoom in so you're not using all of it. You'd be using something like about a circle like that. It's a decent option. There's a lot of tools that you can do to kind of do this to a photo. I like this option because it's completely free and you don't need to sign up to use this site. This website also allows you to take this image and if it's not super high resolution, you can go to Upscale Media over here and that's upscale.media and upload the image that you just generated. doing both of them. So this is what you can choose between. It will do normal upscaling, and this is only if your photo isn't high resolution. If it already is, you're good to upload that to LinkedIn. The optimal profile picture for LinkedIn is 400 by 400. So if you've got that already, that's great. I started with a rather low resolution image, and so I'm gonna upscale it. And you can do normal upscaling, by two, or you can do AI upscaling, AI upscaling, and this, you have a choice, one, two, three, and four. You can go in here and take a look and see how much clearer even the eye is from the one on the right to the one on the left. There we go. It does a really good job. So it really kind of makes those pixels pop. I'll download this image. And, and you end up with that. So, so it's going to be working fine for something like LinkedIn where you're only using a small amount of the image and it's a tiny little profile pic. Our second option is going to be using an AI headshot generator. I tried some free AI generators that generate an image quickly, but I didn't get good results. Now, let me see if I can find one here from one that I tried. This is from a free generator. <laughs> now, maybe it was the photos that I uploaded to the AI, but I did use the same for my paid tests. And I won't name the site that did this, but for some reason I look cartoonish and it seems to have given me kind of a weird smile. I can't tell if those are supposed to be like little teeth or yeah. And I've got different colored eyes, which is super creepy. I found doing this with AI a little bit creepy overall, but um, that, one, that one was not great. Moving on, I did try a couple that were paid, and my favorites by far were Dreamwave AI and the Multiverse AI, which I will show you here. Now, this is in the context of trying to get a professional profile picture. Dreamwave AI was my top pick because it does have a free option, but you have to wait in a queue for that, and it can take up to a few weeks. Both of these sites have an affordable paid option and both generated some photos that I really feel are usable, especially if you're only gonna use them for a little bit. As with most AI tools, there are lots of options on the market and more come out every day. So if you find a new one that you love, feel free to go and use that. I may not have even seen it. 
I selected Dreamwave AI after looking at a number of them because it's got a professional vibe, a good selection that actually resembled me, and they felt real, not cartoonish or kind of embellished, which was really my main issue with some of the other options that I tried. You do need to upload five photos, and most AI headshot generators require a lot more photos than that. So I found Dreamwave to be less hassle. When selecting selfies or photos, pick out photos that you like and that look like you on a good day. Wear different things and try and be in different locations because that really helps the AI generate kind of a range of good images of you. Okay, so over here we want to go to Dreamwave, and here is where you're going to upload your photos. I've already gone through this, but we'll just select one so that you can see this next screen. You're going to want to put in five unique photos of you to generate the headshots, and they're assuring you that it's completely private and can be deleted after use. So from here, you upload however many more you want to use, and then it will take you to a pay screen. Now, this will take two hours to generate. So I'll jump ahead to the generation that I've already used. And here you can see some of their photos on their site. Now, if you're going to look at different AI options, then take a look for sure on their web pages for the different sort of generations that you, they do. Most of these are pretty, you know, professional. I think a lot of it depends on what you upload. And in full disclosure, I used the least expensive option with Dreamwave, which was about 35 US because it was comparable to the pricing of the Multiverse AI at 29 US. I also did really like the Multiverse AI, but it requires a greater input of your own photos and they have to be high enough resolution after you crop them to be usable by the Multiverse AI. This took me, let's just say, a couple of tries and switching out of photos. And initially, it was a lot more work to do this than to use the other AI headshot generator. So let's go to Dreamwave, and I'm going to show you the generation that I got. All right, so after you wait a couple hours, this is your gallery. They're going to email you with a link. You can open it up and you're going to get about four pages. It depends how much you paid. You'll get more photos if you pay for more. I don't really think it's worth it to necessarily pay for a higher tier if all you're looking is for one or two photos for your LinkedIn because I think this has a few options. Some of them do not have really strange backgrounds like this or, um, uh, you know, just aren't usable, but maybe something along the lines of this. Let's click this one. Let's see what touch up tools are. So here you can crop the image, remove blemishes, auto improve your eyes and improve your teeth. I didn't find any of the AIs to do a great job with teeth. Uh, but your results may be better. I guess part of it is how many photos you use and what photos you use. But let's just say um, I wanted to improve eyes. Let's see what that does to this image. I'm not really sure what that did, but you can use it like that or revert to the original. Maybe it made them a little whiter. Let's see. Revert to original. Okay, so it did make a little bit of a change there. You can kind of see it. I'll do it one more time. It gives it a little bit more of a focused look, whereas before it had a bit of a blank stare. So that's kind of nice. Um, I'll try to find one with teeth. So even something like that for a LinkedIn, but I'd prefer something in a suit. Maybe this. Now, some of these are just really strange, like, <laughs> um, and it's a little eerie that they can do this so quickly. Um, so it's a little bit like looking at almost versions of you. This one's kind of nice. Maybe I'll mark that one. It's in a suit. I could see that as a LinkedIn profile. And... I'm going to look for some here with a smile. Maybe I'll go further in and see if there's some there. So they give you quite a few options. Some of these are really weird and don't look like me. 
and some of them I could see possibly using. There's one with teeth. So let's just let's go in to edit this one to blow it up a little bit. And this is what I mean. They sort of mush the teeth together. Um, auto improve teeth. Let's see what that does. Okay, so that sort of straightens them more. If your smile's a little bit off, I'm not sure AI is gonna help you because it's not gonna keep any of your sort of original um, structure. This sort of made, you know, a, denti a perfect dentist smile for me. It's kind of interesting, but um, let's see, maybe this one too. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, it's a, it does weird, sort of a weird thing with the mouth. So there's probably enough here to use, let's say this one for a LinkedIn profile. That could be passable. You can even crop it if you want to. It's more of a square image. Something like that could be apply crop, go back, and then from here you can download the image. So it'll be in your downloads there. Um, some of the backgrounds and stuff are just bizarre. Like I have no idea why this photo was generated. Um, and so you're gonna have some that are completely not usable. And hopefully you're gonna have five or six to choose from that, that are good. Now, one thing I did really like about this was that you can kind of tell what looks good and what doesn't. And one thing I like about this is it sort of gives you a preview into what to wear if you're actually going to pay for a headshot session. So this one I quite like. And I would consider using a blazer and a shirt like this for a headshot session. So I sort of have an idea of what might look good. Um, you can go to this as well. And you can also get ideas of backgrounds that you might like. So it's sort of a good tool for that as well because it really reduces your planning for your actual session once you get to that point. Now, we're going to rinse and repeat this step for the Multiverse AI, and I will show you the photos generated by that option as well, so you can get a sort of an idea of what tool you might want to try. So for the Multiverse, this is their website, and you get your photos for $29, and I believe that is in US dollars. but. You can go through and take a look at some of these here, and they're really quite nice. Um, you can even see what photos these people used as part of their content. So this gal used these photos to generate hers, and I think that's this girl right here. It's kind of nice to see the base photo somebody used to get their AI images, so you have an idea of what you need to use. But after you go through the pay screen, you can um, upload, and they have to be in this sort of square format. So their uploader will put all of your headshots and make you size them into a square. They have to be high enough resolution for this to work. So some of your photos, you may have to either go and use the um, upsizer again that I showed you before you can go back and upload them on this screen. Now, I'm gonna switch ahead here. I've already paid for this. This took a couple hours. They emailed me the link, same sort of deal. And these are some of the photos that I got from, uh, this is the Multiverse AI. Now, I made a mistake and I'm showing you so you don't do the same thing, but I included a couple headshots when I had shorter hair. So, they also generated those types of photos for me. And I don't know, some of them are okay. Um, but if you are thinking about having a haircut, ladies, this is a great way to get an idea of what it might look like on you. Um, so let's go through these really quickly. Some of them are, are, are pretty good. I could see using a couple of them. Um, some of them are a little bit, they're, they're cropped a little tight and they do some odd things 
with the lips and teeth in this as well. They do this strange thing around the lips and teeth, and they've done it in a number of photos. Here's one that looks nothing like me. Uh, and maybe if I download it, it will. There we go. OK, this is just to show you the strangeness of the teeth. I, I don't know what's happening here. Um, this generation obviously isn't a great one of me, but it is a it, it is sort of a good thing to notice. And while they didn't do a great job there, this does look more like um, more like me. So there are some here that could be used for profile pics for sure. Um, but that sort of gives you an idea of what your images will look like um, from both of those. And the other one were sort of like this. So this did use a lot of um, sort of business. And I think you got about the same amount of photos. I'm in a chef's jacket there. That's a bit odd. But the same amount of photos from both. So we're going to go to this next, because the next step here is going to be designing your custom profile background image. Basically, just pick the headshot you want from any of those options, upload it to LinkedIn, and then start designing that custom profile. Of course, this is an optional step, but I found it kind of fun, and it sort of makes your LinkedIn stand out. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's that banner image across the top of your LinkedIn page behind your headshot. This same design can also be used if you have a professional X or Twitter page or a Facebook. Basically, you can use a version of this anywhere you want to polish up your online presence. Now, you can go to any image generator for this. And I'm going to show you a couple that are free that I really liked. Basically, the idea is to create an image that complements your LinkedIn profile. So it gives a visual impression of who you are as a professional, just like your headshots do. This can be a really fun step, but I did put it last because, honestly, it's totally optional. You can create this custom profile background image. And to do so, first, we're going to use AI to brainstorm for ideas, and then use a text to image generator, and finally go to Canva for the edits. And the edits I'm talking about are putting in your name or your, or your profession. Now, if you are in a hurry, you can skip right ahead to Canva and use pre-made templates that they have there. Many are free. But just remember, other people will be using these. And so you can edit them a little bit, but they're not going to be as special or as unique. I'll be using AI to ensure that we're creating one that is personalized and representative of our unique professional background. First, we're going to go over to Claude and enter the following prompt. Analyze the following points and generate 20 creative ideas for a LinkedIn profile background image that I can use a text to image AI tool to generate. Now you're going to just put in your headline, your professional summary, your work experience, your education experience. I just went to my LinkedIn and dropped these things in from there because we've already updated it. And even if I just do a couple, we can see what generation that I get back here. So so Claude's then going to generate a whole bunch of these options. And I have done this before, and I put in all of the information that I had. And when I did that, I got slightly different um, ideas. So you can do things like a minimalist representation of a film, clapperboard, microphone, and pen, bookshelves with titles related to your projects and achievements, AI-generated artistic interpretation of your voice pattern. So these are all really good ideas. I put something a little bit more. Um, complete together when I did it. And I went to a website called Lexica. Now, I like this for a couple reasons. You want to go to lexica.art and backslash aperture. This I really like for this. Now, there are tons of text to image generators, but this is free for a certain amount of generations, which will more than cover you for your background image. 
The reason I like it is because it's one of the free ones where you can scale your image and you're gonna want to make it go all the way down as far as possible here for what you're scaling. You can pick slower fast generation, um, but I dropped in the prompt that I liked the best, which was a stylized Ill illustration depiction of a desktop featuring a microphone with sound waves, scripts, magazines, writing tools, traditional theater masks, and digital Im imagery related to AI and image generation laid out neatly in black and white. Now a negative prompt here might be things like color and people or animals. Let's spell that correctly. There we go. Um, and then you run a hit generate. The reason I like this is because it already gives you a long sort of correct sizing for LinkedIn. Now it's not perfectly going to fit your LinkedIn banner, but it's pretty close. And it was one of the better ones that were free. So I did this a number of times and I got lots of different imaging. This one, I wanted it to be attached with line drawing outline. So it did a lot of these types of images, which I thought were pretty neat as well. And these can be downloaded for quite some time. For this one, I added some color. And I thought that was really pretty. I think I ended up choosing one of these. So this is, ended up being one of the image that that I chose for my for my banner. But each time you can see they you've got the text prompt underneath. And so I changed them slightly. This is before I changed the aspect ratio. So you don't want anything in this aspect ratio. You won't be able to use very much of it for your LinkedIn headshot banner. So here's another one. Let's just take one of these prompts here and copy it. Because another option for this is going to perchance.org, which is an AI photo generation. And let's just paste and click. I've already made the mistake of picking portrait, so I'll have to redo that. Let's go to landscape and generate. And as you can see with this, I thought some of these were really interesting, but they're going to have to be cut in a way that isn't really going to fit your LinkedIn. One thing I really liked about this generator though is that they had here it is, concept sketch as a, as a choice. And I found that to be really interesting for a LinkedIn background. So depending what you're doing, possibly architecture or something like that. Now this is using the same prompt that I used in Lexica. So you can see that you get really different generations depending on what text to image generator you choose. Once you've selected the image you want, we're gonna go over here to Canva to create a design. So from here, you wanna to go to the LinkedIn background photo option, which, and they give you the exact sizing for it, which is 1,584 1, by 396 pixels. So that's the one you wanna select. And these are the templates that you can select from uh, if you just wanna do something that's already been done, so those are completely valid, but since we have already sort of put on all the work, I'm gonna go to Uploads, and I'm gonna select this one. So this is the design that I have. You can see that it didn't quite fit, so we're gonna stretch it out a little bit. so that it completely fits the background here. That's not so bad, but let's say we wanna take out some of this and write our name so there's a little bit of room. What I did is I went in and I edited this out and I did it right here on Canva. And then I put in some text for my name. So it ended up looking like this. So when you've got the image that you want, you can share it just by downloading.
And when you're done with that, you can go to your LinkedIn. And if you want to, you can change out. But let's put that one in there. That was one of our AI generated photos. You can also change sort of the, or zoom in and out. I'm just going to leave it like that. Save photo. And for the background image that we just generated, we're going to change the photo there. We're going to upload a photo. There we go. We're going to apply that. And now that is what our LinkedIn looks like. So you can change the color and your font or do any of that in LinkedIn, whatever you like. And you've got a completely updated profile. So that's what the end result of mine looked like. And I'm actually quite happy with it, especially for the amount of time that I put in. I think that it looks a lot better than the initial one. So this is the before and after. This is sort of what it looked like, and I didn't have a lot filled in. And this is my new one. And I think it's improved quite a bit. I especially like that this now looks like me instead of the short hair I had three years ago. And the about sections and everything else are a lot more filled in. So from this, my takeaway is that AI can make tasks a little bit easier and quicker but it really still needs a human to direct it. And you definitely still need to edit everything and put the time in to do that. AI tools are just really helpful in generating content and ideas. It helps to, you to get over writer's block so that you can enhance things like your resume and profile quickly. It also does a lot to generate content in any sort of form, whether that's a blog post or an essay. Thank you for watching and checking out how to use AI on your LinkedIn. In the next episode, I'm going to take a look at how to create AI prompts like the one I used here and what information matters to AI when prompting to get the best responses.